right guys, it is that time of the month again. No, not that time of the month. It is time for a monthly wrap up. During the month of March, I read 11 books. Um, only five of them were physical books. The rest of them were ebooks slash audiobooks. I had a pretty mediocre month when it came to reading. I don't know why. A lot of the books that I picked out this month had been on my list for a long time and I really, really been wanting to read them. I don't know what happened. I feel like I had higher hopes for a few of the books that I read and they just did not turn out the way that I thought they were going to. I don't feel like I read too many terrible books this month. I just feel like a lot of them were a little underwhelming and just not what I anticipated and were maybe a little overrated. So let's talk about them. All right, book number one this month was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I am happy to say that this book exceeded my expectations. I didn't know if it would be a five-star read or not, but I was hoping that it would at least be a four-star read. This is now one of my favorite books of all time. So this book follows the Albright family. There is Ernt and Cora Albright, they're the parents, and then they have a 14-year-old daughter named Lenora, or Lenny for short. Ernt is a Vietnam veteran. He receives a letter from his old buddy's father. Essentially in the letter, his buddy's father tells him that his son wanted him to have his land when he passes away, which he did just recently pass away. This land is in Alaska. They have no idea what to expect, but they decide, let's just do it. Let's move, let's get a fresh start. Lenny's father seems to be having a lot of problems with work and such, so they pack up and they move to Alaska. When they get there, they realize that they are very unprepared for the upcoming Alaskan winter. So essentially the book is about them trying to survive. There are some other things that the characters need to survive throughout this book. I'm not going to spoil that though. This is a spoiler free review and wrap up. So this book just absolutely blew me away. I do think the first hundred pages or so were a little slow and this is a long book. I think this is over 400 pages, maybe five. So it was a little hard to get through those first hundred pages, but there was a lot of character development, a lot of world building happening. So it definitely did make you develop a connection with these characters and I just loved all of them. Well, not all of them, but most of them. I teared up so many times throughout this book. There were some scenes that were just shocking. I wasn't expecting crazy twists to be happening, but kind of threw me for a loop a few times. I would love to see this become a movie. I think it would be amazing. I did some research and apparently they are considering turning it into a film, but nothing has happened yet. I think this would be such a good film. It was so, so good. I loved her writing. This was my first book by Kristen Hanna, but I'm definitely planning to read more. I ended up rating this book five out of five stars. The next book that I read this month was Saving Noah by Lucinda Berry. This was my very first Lucinda Berry book as well, and I'm almost at a loss of words for this one. This was a gut-wrenching book. This book follows a family of four, and the son named Noah in this book, when he was 15 years old, he ended up essaying two young girls. He ends up going to a treatment center to hopefully try and get better from this. His parents are kind of divided on whether they not necessarily agree with what he did. Obviously, neither one of them agree with what he did, but his mother still wants to have a relationship with him and still take care of him. She just views it in a way that she wants to just try and get him better and hopefully things will change as time goes on. Whereas his father kind of wants nothing to do with him anymore. He's kind of just written him off, doesn't want to speak to him, wouldn't visit him when he was in treatment. You kind of slowly watch this family divide and disintegrate over time. And that's all I can say without spoiling anything. <laughs> this book was pretty slow. I'd probably say at least the first 50 to 60% of it. I was anticipating this to be more of a thriller, 
but it wasn't that much of a thriller. It had thriller aspects to it, but I wouldn't just flat out say that this was a thriller. There was a ton ton of world building and character development for the first half of the book. You're just kind of getting to know the family, where they started, how they got where they are. There's multiple timelines, which is really interesting. There's even different POVs. Most of the POV is from the mother, but there are some chapters from the POV of Noah as well, which is very interesting to kind of get his personal insight into what is going on with him. This book was probably the first book that made me question my morals, which is kind of a crazy thing to say. I would say that this book is kind of controversial. It's it's hard because obviously you don't agree with what Noah did. What he did was wrong. There's no excuse for it. He deserved to be punished for it. But at the same time, you really do build a connection with his character. And outside of this one horrible thing that he did, he seems to be a really good kid. So it's it's really hard not to like him. So I feel like that was something that I struggled with this entire book, was kind of alternating between hating him and loving him. Because he was still a kid at the end of the day, and he was still trying to figure out who he was, why he did what he did, how he got here, how, what he can do to try and be a better person in the future. <sighs> It was just, yeah, it was really difficult for me. I highly suggest that you make sure to look up the trigger warnings for this book because I imagine, especially as a parent, some of these things would be really, really difficult to read. So please, please, please look that up in advance. It was really well written. Honestly, after reading this book, I just had a very strong feeling that Lucinda Berry is going to be one of my new favorite authors. All in all, I really, really enjoyed this book and I ended up giving it four and a half out of five stars. Book number three this month was The Silent Patient. It's probably one of the oldest books that I had on my TBR and I finally got around to reading it and here are my thoughts. So essentially this follows the main character um, named Theo. He is a psychotherapist. He becomes obsessed with a murder case. This case involves a couple, Alicia and Gabriel. Six years ago, Alicia loses it and she shoots her husband, Gabriel, and he dies. Nobody knows why she did this and she doesn't even try to defend herself. She doesn't say a single word after the murder. Instead of going to jail, she ends up going to a psychiatric hospital where she's been in treatment for the past six years. Over that time, she has still not spoken a single word. So Theo decides that he's going to try and apply for a position at this psychiatric hospital to see if he can potentially get to the bottom of this case and get her to speak and tell us what happened. This book was crazy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I was really happy that this was, again, one of those books that met my expectations or exceeded my expectations. I was hoping that this would be a good one because I have it's just talked about endlessly. And I know I'm kind of late to the game here, <laughs> but I absolutely loved this book. It was so interesting. I loved how there were multiple timelines. I love it when two different timelines kind of come together. It was really, really well done. I loved how they included Alicia's diary in here so that way it feels like you've got two different points of view you can kind of see what led up to this murder i love the writing in this i was so engaged i read this in just a couple of days the twist i was not anticipating <laughs> whatsoever yeah i don't feel like i have a whole lot of negative things to say about it for some reason i still wasn't able to give this five out of five stars i gave it four and a half out of five stars but i still really really recommend this book if you are into thrillers i definitely think this is a good introduction to thrillers i really really recommend this book it was so fantastic Book number four this month was Hidden Pictures. This follows a 21-year-old woman named Mallory. She just got out of rehab. She's been struggling with a drug addiction for some time now. She knows she needs to turn her life around and she hears about an opportunity for a nanny position where she would be nannying for a, I believe he was a six-year-old boy. So she ends up going for an interview, meeting with the Maxwell family and they really like her. They end up hiring her to watch their son named Teddy. Teddy really loves to draw, but as the book goes on, his drawings get 
more and more creepy and disturbing. I feel like that's kind of the simplest way to <laughs> explain this book. I think Honestly, this was one of the books this month that I had a little bit higher expectations for. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it, I thought it was incredibly unique. I really loved the illustrations in here. As you can see, they actually have these included in the book. So instead of just describing the drawings to you, you can actually see them for yourself. I thought that was really, really unique for like an adult <laughs> book. I don't remember the last time I read a book that had pictures in it. So this was really cool. It definitely gave you a visualization of what our main character Mallory was seeing for herself. So I did really love that aspect of the book. That's probably one of my favorite things about the book because it was so different. I did like the characters. I do think the writing was done pretty well. I think what got me a little bit and what made me not like this book as much as I thought I was going to was the end. And again, because this is going to be a spoiler-free <laughs> review, I can't really go into crazy details. I feel like if you want to do a crazy twist, make it realistic for the world that the book takes place in, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be realistic as far as real life goes because this is a fictional story. But I do feel like the twist did not make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, like it made sense, it worked. It just felt so far-fetched and so out there that I thought, mm, I don't know about that. I will say though that the twist was unexpected. I did not see it coming, so that was kind of cool. But I didn't really like how it went. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> it was a, a little bit of a letdown for me. It doesn't mean that I didn't like this book and I wouldn't recommend it, but it definitely wasn't my favorite thriller out there. Overall, I am happy that I decided to finally read it because this was a book on my TBR for a very long time. That being said, keep that in mind when you get to the end. I ended up giving this book, I think, three and a half out of five stars, so not terrible, but not the best. Right, book number five this month was Near the Bone by Christina Henry. So this is supposed to be kind of a horror thriller type book, and I was really excited to listen to this in my long drive home from Washington to Idaho. I had a ton of time to listen to an audiobook, so this is the one that I chose. I do think the audiobook was done pretty well, but I didn't really like the book. So this book follows a woman named Maddie and her husband William. Right? I think his name is William. Yes. They live out in the remote wilderness in this cabin at the top of this mountain, and pretty early on you realize that Maddie is being abused by her husband. He is kind of isolating her in this cabin. She's not allowed to speak to other people. Kind of an interesting personal dynamic going on. There's also another part of the plot where they discover really unusual animal footprints in the snow that don't look like any animal footprints they recognize. It ends up being some crazy, creepy monster. So. I thought the concept for this book was pretty interesting and that is why I had pretty high hopes for it. I was incredibly disappointed with how this book turned out. First of all, it was not scary whatsoever. It did not freak me out and I was driving in the dark by myself for hours. This did not scare me at all. I do think the monster wasn't described enough like there were little aspects that the author decided to throw in there to describe its crazy paws and its hair and stuff like that i i don't know why the whole time <laughs> every time that the author described what this monster looked like for some reason i kept seeing saul in monster <laughs> Inc. so i wasn't scared i also feel like the writing was so repetitive it, oh my god, it bothered me so much. Most of the book consists of Maddie's inner monologue. So you're just hearing her thoughts a lot of the time. I mean, there's, there's a good amount of dialogue, but I feel like the majority of it is in her head. And so she just continues to think the same things 
over and over again in maybe slightly different ways. I just felt like I kept rereading the same paragraph throughout the book. It was really frustrating. I feel like it could have been cut a lot shorter because of that. I actually feel like the most interesting part of the book was the personal dynamic going on with Maddie and William and their whole relationship, their history, like how they started dating. I obviously don't want to give anything away, but I think that was the most interesting part of it. And then you know what? And you want to know what Christina does? She leaves the book on the biggest cliffhanger ever. I feel like there was not enough closure for this book. I had so many unanswered questions about Maddie and her history that it frustrated the hell out of me. I was just really upset when I finished the book. I was like, that was kind of a waste of time. I probably should have DNF'd it. The only reason why I didn't is because <laughs> I started listening to it on my Spotify and I started using my audiobook hours. And so I didn't have enough audiobook hours for the month to start a new book. So I decided to just see it through. Honestly, I really don't recommend this book. I don't normally say that about books because I feel bad doing it for some reason, but this was not a good book. Initially, I gave it two and a half out of five stars, but I almost feel like I want to lower it to two now that I'm talking about it. It just wasn't good. I don't recommend it. <laughs> All right, my next book this month was The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. This book was on my TBR for a really long time as well. It was like one of the first books that I heard of by Lucinda Berry, and I was really happy to see that it was on Kindle Unlimited, so I decided to take advantage of that. I kind of alternated between the audiobook and the ebook, and I think both were pretty good. So this follows a couple, Hannah and Christopher. They both work at the hospital. Christopher is a surgeon and Hannah is a nurse. Unfortunately, they've been struggling with fertility issues, so they were in the process of trying to adopt a child. When suddenly, a toddler is found in this random parking lot, covered in blood, obviously has several injuries to her body, and she's taken to the hospital where Christopher and Hannah work. So Christopher ends up performing a surgery for her, and they grow really close. They are unable to locate her parents, her mother especially, they don't even know who the father is. So instead of just throwing her in the foster care system, Christopher and Hannah decide that they want to try and foster her since they've kind of developed a little bit of a relationship with her at the hospital. And this is where things get crazy. All I'm gonna say is that she's not the innocent little girl that you think she is. <laughs> Overall, I feel like I liked this book. Again, the writing was so great. I definitely read like a Lucinda Berry book, even though the only other book I read was Saving Noah by her. It felt like the writing was so similar and I was addicted. I just, I was constantly listening to the audiobook whenever I had time, reading the ebook whenever I had time. I thought it was so good. The main negative thing I have to say about this book is obviously it's not a very unique concept. This has been done time and time again. It kind of reminded me of the movie Orphan, a very similar situation. It even kind of reminded me of some other books that I've read, like The Push by Ashley Audrain. With that being said though, again, I had a hard time putting the book down. It was really, really engaging. I definitely think there were some things that happened in the book that I was not expecting. So I do think there were obviously a few things here and there that kind of caught me off guard and which was kind of refreshing given the fact that this is such an overplayed like concept. Overall, I really love this book. I do recommend it if you are into thrillers. I give this book four out of five stars. The next book that I read this month was Seed by Anya Alborn. And this book is available on Kindle Unlimited. Seed follows a family of four, they've got the parents and two young daughters. In the beginning of the book, they are driving down this isolated road and end up getting into a really crazy accident. Fortunately, all of them walked away without a scratch. Everyone's doing fine, except their youngest daughter, Charlie, who's only six. She starts getting violently ill the coming days after the accident. Once she's no longer physically sick, she starts acting incredibly strange. She starts seeing things that are very unlike herself. Her personality is different. She seems to be staring off into space, 
at nothing. Their parents start getting very concerned about her. This is actually something that Jack experienced when he was a child, and he knows exactly what is going on with her. That's all I can say without spoiling anything. This book was crazy. This book definitely creeped me out a lot. I do think there were some stretches of the book that were kind of running a little too long, but um, I do think it was pretty interesting. I don't feel like this is really a very unique concept, but I do like the way that the author executed on this. I had literal nightmares after <laughs> reading this book. It really, really disturbed me. I think one of the only negative things I have to say about this book is the end, it just felt like there's just so much dread, you know what I mean? It was definitely not the ending that you wanted. It just wasn't incredibly satisfying, but I don't know. I suppose it is somewhat of a breath of fresh air when authors don't just give you what you want in the end. I am very interested to read more from this author. I have been wanting to read Brother and the Shuddering for a while now, so this book definitely made me want to do that even more. So I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. The eighth book that I read this month was Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. This book follows a couple, Anne and Wade. The book starts several years after they married. Wade is a little bit older than Anne several years before this book takes place, even though it kind of does jump timelines. Wade used to be married to a woman named Jenny, and they had two daughters named June and May. Tragic accident occurs and leads to a divorce. Wade and Anne end up getting married a year later. I don't really want to go into more details about what the tragic accident was. It is re revealed pretty early on in the book. Um, but it involves Wade's previous family. I honestly had very mixed feelings about this book. Even though this book is pretty short, it took me, I feel like, way too long to finish it because I just had a hard time getting through it. I do think in some senses the writing was really beautiful. There were some areas I was like, wow, this is actually really poetic. Definitely not like anything else that I've ever read before. However, it just felt so long. I feel like a book that's barely 300 pages should not have felt as long as this book did. It's definitely a slow burn and I knew that going into it, but I, I had higher hopes for this book, really. I did like that it took place in Idaho, which is where I live, so that was kind of interesting. I will say that the ending was weird. I was hoping for a different ending that answered more questions about this tragic accident that happened in the beginning. Unfortunately, it did not. And I suppose in situations like this, because this is a very like realistic type of story that could have occurred in real life. I suppose in this type of situation, in reality, you don't always get all your questions answered. So. I have such a hard time with books like this that are realistic in that way. It's so hard to read a book and not get closure on everything that you were wondering. So sometimes that kind of frustrates me, but at the same time it is kind of it is kind of a realistic take. But I think my review or rating definitely was heavily influenced by how long this book felt, even though it was so short. So I ended up giving this book three and a half out of five stars. The next book that I read this month was Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. This was my first Alice Feeney book and it is available on Kindle Unlimited. So this book follows a woman named Amber. The book takes place two different time, or actually three different timelines technically. So you start off present day, she is in a coma and she's technically awake in the sense that she can hear everything that's going on around her, but she's actually not physically awake to where she can open her eyes or speak or move or anything like that. She can hear everything that's going on. She's trying to piece together how she got there. She's trying to recall the events leading up to this apparent accident that put her in the coma. So you've got present day in the coma, and then you've got another timeline that takes place the week prior to her accident, which kind of helps slowly unfold the events leading up to the accident itself. And then you've got another timeline 20 years in the past 
through diary entries. And slowly these three timelines kind of come together to explain what happened to her and how she got into this coma in the first place. I definitely really liked the concept for this book. It was honestly like nothing I've ever read before. I did like the writing. I had a hard time putting it down. I understand why people like Alice Feeney now. I'm definitely interested in reading some more of her books. I've been wanting to read Rock, Paper, Scissors for a while now. So it was really well written. I did like all of these different timelines that kind of came together to explain everything that happened. And then you get to the twist. Now the twist was crazy. Nothing that I could have anticipated coming. However, and there was another twist and then another twist and then it just felt like, whoa, what the hell is going on right now? It was really overwhelming the last like 30 pages of the book where things just kept happening. It felt like, you know, things were slowly being unraveled and you were kind of figuring things out and then it was just like, bam, 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 bam. And you're like, whoa, slow down. So I feel like leading up to that point, it was going really well for me. I was very interested and engaged, but then I feel like when it was starting to be revealed, it was just way too many things. I think there needed to be one big twist, not 50. It just felt like way too much was going on. It seemed a little out there for me. So I don't know, that's kind of why my rating isn't as high as I think it would have been if that didn't happen. Overall, I did like the book. I am glad that I read it. <sighs> yeah, it was, it was a little too chaotic at the end for me. So definitely not my favorite thriller, but I definitely still want to give Alice Feeney a second chance <laughs> because I do think the writing itself was pretty good. I ended up giving this book three out of five stars. Book number 10 this month was The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. This book is available on Kindle Unlimited. This book starts out with two FBI agents named Victor and Edison. They're trying to get to the bottom of this crazy case. Essentially, several girls around the ages of 16 to 20 years old are being kidnapped and held captive in this man's garden. He refers to the girls that he kidnaps as his butterflies and he even tattoos butterflies on the back of every single girl that he brings into his garden. The bulk of the book takes place with an interrogation room and they're interviewing one of the girls that's been there for the past few years. She seems to be kind of almost the leader of the group of girls and they've been under the impression that a lot of the girls look up to her. So they figured she would probably be the best person to interview and try and get to the bottom of this butterfly garden. So this girl's name is Maya. However, that is not her real name. The gardener, who is also the kidnapper of all of these girls, he renames each of the girls after he kidnaps them. So Maya is the name that he gives this girl. So basically the book is just Maya's perspective, trying to tell her story, how she got there, why the gardener does this, why he kidnaps girls, what happens when you're there. I found this book to be very, very intriguing. I thought the concept was super original, at least for me, I haven't heard anything that sounded similar to this. It was really well written. I did enjoy the audiobook. I liked how it was told from kind of like a third person point of view of what was happening through the investigation. Also from Maya's point of view, as she explains her experience in the butterfly garden. It was incredibly engaging. I will say this was one of those cases, again, where I thought this was going to be a thriller, but it was not as much of a thriller as I anticipated it to be. Definitely a little bit of a slow burn. You're very, very slowly unraveling not just what happened at the garden, but also Maya's history. I don't know. Some areas were a little, a little slow for me. I also felt like I got to a point in the book where I didn't think there was going to be much else to know, if that makes sense. Like you kind of got the gist of what was happening in the garden relatively early on as far as once that stuff starts being revealed it was kind of like okay so i wonder what the rest of this book is going to be about then because it didn't feel like there were going to be any crazy twists or anything like that I, I just didn't really get that vibe anymore however there was something at the end of the book that was a little twisty and you were like oh i wasn't expecting that i don't feel like it really made the most sense it was kind of out there for me a little bit. Still definitely kind of nice to have that random twist at the end that I wasn't anticipating to come. Overall, I did really like this book. 
and I do recommend it if you are interested in mystery thriller type genres. I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. Okay, and last but not least, book number 11 this month was The Book Thief. This book takes place during World War II in Germany. We are following our main character, Liesel. Unfortunately, her mother can no longer care for her and her brother anymore, so they end up going into foster care. This is obviously a really difficult transition for Liesel. She doesn't understand why her mother is giving her away. Luckily, she ends up bonding with her foster parents pretty quickly, especially her foster father. And the reason for the title of this book is because Liesel is the book thief herself. In the very beginning of the book, unfortunately, Liesel's brother dies before they reach the foster home. So they end up having a funeral for him and she ends up stealing a book that one of the grave diggers drops. She ends up falling in love with reading once her new foster father Hans teaches her how to read and it just becomes her greatest passion in life. So I feel like that's one half of the story and then the other half of the story is that at some point her foster family end up hiding a Jewish man in their basement for a period of time to try and protect him. So there's kind of two big plot points going on throughout this book. And a lot of really sad things happen, as you can imagine. <laughs> I gotta be honest, throughout this book, there were some periods that I was like, wow, this is a little slow. And I remember thinking of all of the videos and people I've seen who've said that this book like made them sob. And I was like, yeah, I don't think that's gonna be me because this is not, no. It's not gonna get me to that point. And then I got to the last like 100 pages of this book, maybe 50 pages. I don't know, it was, this was over 500 pages, so. But towards the end of the book, it finally happened. You know, I teared up a few times in the beginning, but man, Towards the end, I actually cried. This is only the second book that has ever actually made tears fall from my eyes. I think obviously with a book so long, you end up really developing a very strong connection to the characters. I really liked the way that this book was written. Some of the chapters were really, really short, like a page long. And there were like little mini notes and like headlines about the whole thing, which I thought was kind of interesting. And I also liked the narration of this book. This book is actually told from the perspective of death itself. I mean, it was essentially just a third person perspective. I fell in love with so many of these characters. I think it was really beautiful. It was really tragic. It was so incredibly heartbreaking. But yeah, this was a really good historical fiction type book. I definitely love switching it up between thrillers and fiction, just like whether that be literary fiction or historical fiction, just to kind of alternate speeds at which I read. Because this one kind of like, you know, forced me to slow down. This took me eight days to read, but it was worth taking the time. Now, I have to go watch the movie because I found out it was a movie when I finished this book. So, overall, really, really enjoyed this book. Highly recommend it if you're looking for something that will make you sad. I ended up giving this book four and a half out of five stars. Overall, it was a pretty decent reading month. I was hoping for more books that were four plus out of five stars. But again, I still got a lot of the books that were my TBR checked off my list and I'm stoked about that. Thank you for tuning in for my monthly wrap up for the month of March this year. I really appreciate it. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me. Happy reading!